Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So a podcast about Star Wars joy seems a particularly apt place to discuss the appearance of Ahmed Best as Kelleran Beck the Jedi who saves Grogu in Chapter 20 of The Mandalorian, The Foundling. And I say that because the amount of joy that I felt when the doors opened and it was him was just overwhelming just absolutely overwhelming and I sincerely hope you had the same experience as well but who is Kelleran Beck so we don't know much about the character because the character was originated for a game show for Jedi Temple Challenges it ran for 10 episodes in just one season on the Star Wars Kids YouTube channel it was set on a Jedi starship which I think pronunciation wise the Athelia I think that's how you say it where there were a series of challenges for Jedi younglings to pursue. And Keller and Beck, all we knew about his backstory was that he was dedicated to teaching and he had earned the nickname the Sabered Hand as a Padawan for his lightsaber skills, which clearly were on display in that episode of The Mandalorian. Beyond that, we're going to have to make guesses at his backstory, but there's one particularly easy to guess thing, or at least easy to guess at thing, which has to do with the fact that if he called friends for help and his friends were Royal Naboo security forces, then this seems to suggest that either <laughs> Keller and Beck is a native of Naboo himself, or B, he has done some sort of I'll say favors, but maybe that's not the right word, but just whatever in the course of his travels and work as a Jedi, he's done something kind enough for Naboo royalty or former royalty where they said, hey, anytime you need a favor, put out the call. Now, the captain of the guard may not have known him because he had to confirm, like, are you Kelleran Beck? When Kelleran arrived on that platform, but that captain knew what the deal was, knew that there might possibly be other Jedi coming, and knew that his responsibility and the responsibility of the guards was to protect whoever showed up on that platform to the point of saying, here, take the, take the yacht, basically. And this is an H-type Naboo yacht, which is the same kind of yacht that Padme flew to Tatooine in Attack of the Clones. So once again, the good people of Naboo are making great sacrifices to help preserve the fate of the galaxy. But let's roll it backward to the Jedi Temple and the fact that we have four Jedi who are escorting Grogu, trying to get Grogu safely out of the temple. And at this moment, it may be the thinking of these Jedi that this is the last living member of the species because Yaddle, as we learn from Tales of the Jedi, has already been killed or has you know disappeared and her fate is utterly unknown. Yoda, we don't know what's happened to him. Like He ultimately disappears off the face of the galaxy. So the Jedi see all of these clone troopers showing up at the temple and gunning all the Jedi down. So they've got to be thinking that yeah, Yoda's possibly been a target of this already, and so we've got the last member of his species right here, and that's how urgent it is that they protect Grogu and try to get him out of here. Grogu is 22 years old at this time. It's established that he, if he was 50 years old when we first met him in The Mandalorian, that would put his birth date at 41 BBY, so he should be 22 years old when we're seeing him here, which is not much of a difference, quite honestly, between the Grogu we see here and the Grogu that we meet in The Mandalorian. But it's not just that they're trying to get Grogu to Kelleran, they're also trying to get themselves to Kelleran as well. I think the ideal situation would have been that all four of the Jedi plus Grogu would have been in that elevator and gotten up to where Kelleran was. We don't know what Kelleran's escape plan was from there because he certainly <laughs> had to improvise and grab one of the speeders that the clone troopers showed up on, but presumably he had a ship somewhere else where he would have taken the other four Jedi and Grogu and flown to that platform where the Naboo shuttle, the Naboo, the Naboo yacht was. Alas, it does not work that way and Grogu ends up going up in the elevator 
alone to be greeted by Kalorin back, who still has to fight off wave after wave of clone troopers before escaping from the Jedi Temple. Then it's rather shocking, isn't it, to see the Jedi Temple complex in flames as Kalorin is speeding away from there? Like, that just seemed kind of stunning to me, even though we know it happens and we've seen variations on it in other storytelling. But there was something kind of surprising about seeing it and going, oh my gosh, that's right. Just being reminded of it just very viscerally brought it back for me. And then we have the chase through the Coruscant skyscraper scape. So <laughs> there's a couple of ways that I want to talk about this. One I'll say is this is TV. This is not a movie. And yet this had special effects to the level of what we saw in the chase scene in Attack of the Clones. I mean, it's amazing. Like, we are 20 plus years after the release of Attack of the Clones, so yes, naturally technology has gotten much better and more amazing and all that stuff, but like, the fact that they're also producing this not just for a special event movie situation, but for television is just astounding to see this level of intricacy with a special effects situation, a whole action setup sequence happening. Like, it's really remarkable. I think the only thing that made me think, oh, well, you know, probably they didn't do that because it's TV, is in the train tunnel when the Republic gunship is about to smash head on with the train tunnel. I can imagine a scenario where if it had been the movies, we would see the train coming out of that portal with the Republic gunship flying off of it and plummeting to heaven knows where in the skyscraper scape but we don't see that and so it's like yeah that's probably like where they're like yeah we're not gonna pay that effect money for it and that's fine and the other way I want to talk about it is just how it brings back a couple of things. First of all, Attack of the Clones for the chase scene, but also for the giant deep dive that Keller and Beck takes on the speeder. And it put me right in mind of Anakin doing that crazy deep dive in the speeder that he had. And it's kind of interesting that he was like, ha 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 and laughing. And Grogu <laughs> was also smiling and enjoying the deep dive craziness of it. And there's also a tie to just last week's episode of The Mandalorian where Kellerin comes out of the train tunnel into a station that leads out onto the plaza with the peak of Umate where <laughs> our, our friends from The Convert where Dr. Pershing and, oh, Kane, Elia Kane were in the previous episode. So it was funny to see that show up again, except it's 30 years earlier. <laughs> and doesn't seem like much has changed, quite honestly. And there are a couple of interesting sound effects things too. For example, the Royal Naboo security guard folks, like their laser pistols have a particularly unique sound and it brought me right back to the Phantom Menace and the scenes where Padme is leading her folks into the Royal Palace to you know try to get up to the throne room and just the sound their blasters make. And then the moment that the doors open in the Jedi Temple and the clone troopers start coming through, like the breaking of it open, there's a sort of storm-like, like thunderclap sound that comes with it that's very reminiscent of the sound of the stormtroopers breaking through onto Princess Leia's cruiser in the very beginning of A New Hope. So we got a piece of Grogu's backstory puzzle. The question will be whether we get anything more in this season. And I can't believe we're halfway through the season already. So, I mean, I suppose it's possible, but one thing we do know is that there's a lot of darkness in his backstory prior to being found by the Mandalorian. At least that's sort of the way that Ahsoka put it when she was commuting with him back in chapter 13 in the Jedi, that it's just a lot of darkness in his memory. So where he goes from here, there's still a lot of story in his life to be told. I have to say though, this was just about the most exciting four or five minutes of the season so far. And just uh, coming back, to that moment of the elevator door opening and Ahmed Best is Kaloran Beck saying, everything's gonna be all right, kid. And like, it just sinks into you. Oh gosh, it's just beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I hope you did too. Would love to hear what you thought about it. Chime in, YouTube comments are right there. If you're catching the audio version, then please head over to sw7x7.com and look for the blog post for this show's episode, episode 3185, or hit me up on your favorite social media channel. And that is gonna do it for this 
this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it. As always, I may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.